So y'all mean to tell me we making Roman Reigns one of the hottest baby faces to not even go after a championship. We made we have no major heel. Gunther's not even got real heat. <clears throat> Finn Balor got more heat than Gunther. Think about that. And Gunther's the heavyweight champion. The uh, the uh, the United States champion, Amir Carter on SmackDown. He has no heat. He's a baby face. Um, go to Cody Rhodes. He has no heat. The monsters that you could have brought up, Solo Sokoa, his new faction with the dude that's six foot eight. Either could have made Jake for two beef with him, then made the Rock Roman Reigns be thrown in. You would have just interchangeable, boom, boom. You would have never knew how it would have hit. Wild still could have still been having Cody had his road to going back to the title as well. It all could have been just one big magical Disney theatrical, but you blew it once again. But you blew it. I'm on your head, bro. It don't make no sense. It just don't. We got three brand new factions, technically four, and I don't see none of them getting over, really. It just don't make no sense, bro. It's all Cody's fault. It's all Cody and his fans' fault. Dude is one-dimensional. He's a straight baby face. Him as a heel would be boring. Why? Because niggas like Bronson Reed ain't believable as baby faces. And he's twice or three times the size as Cody Rhodes. He could squash him just like he did Seth Rollins. How could you go for watching him do six tsunamis on Seth Rollins to having him as a heel, moving him to SmackDown, and all of a sudden he eating one crossroad and he down? The man just squat. He just put Seth Rollins on the shelf, and you're going to have him. See, that's the thing, bro. It still has to be believability. I don't care how you book him. Bronson Reed could be in the mid card, lower than the mid card. It's still believability. That's like having Santos Escobar beat Bobby Lashley clean. It's no believability. Even though he's a cool wrestler, he still wasn't no Neville or Pac. I don't care how many NXT projects Triple H tried to bring up. Pac was like one of his best babies. He ain't do nothing with him. Vince did. And that's so much crazy how Triple H get all this credit. But the way that the WWE, the shape, everything like the Monopoly, he set the pieces, the board, he brought the money, he picked the people that was playing, and yet Triple H get all the credit for it. He gave people like Cody Rhodes who disappeared and became a heavyweight champion a new shot that happened on events. He gave Bobby Lashley people who disappeared and came back. So you know it ain't about color. He gave them a, a shot, and, and that was under Vince. He gave redemption people who disappeared and had to reinvent themselves that came back like Drew McIntyre and made him a heavyweight champion. You know good and well he was going to push Gunther. Triple H, that was a nod to Vince, because everybody in their mama know that was a Vince move. That wasn't you. That was a Vince move. Quit playing, bro. Vince at the table, and now everybody, Papa Triple H, Triple is cooking. Yeah, because he's catering. 75% of the last champions we've been seeing, as we've been watching the bloodline end and be restarted, 75% of the last champions we've been watching since Vince has been, I mean, Triple H has been in charge, has all been baby faces. Let that sink in. And they all been having long title reigns. I don't even know why Sami Zayn won an intercontinental title, for crying out loud. The fuck? Now he's going to go right back to SmackDown and being less than a mid Carter because he's not even challenging for the United States title on some real shit. He's literally there purposely for a one-off Survivor Series match. Like, that shit corny as hell. You literally brought Roman Reigns back. You signed all these Bloodline members to have a damn it fucking War Games match. That's it? That's it. And a Rock ain't even there neither. Or the little six for they dude. Or Zilla Fatu, shout out to him who just got some more tattooed on his back with uh, his daddy on the front of his chest with his thumb tape. So Solo's cool. He probably finna come and do the Samoan spike when he get there too. I'm just putting that in there. But yeah, like come on, bro. What what is what does wrestling become? Look at did y'all just see NXT yesterday? Did you? We believe. Come on, bro. When has wrestling been? I mean, I get it in the 80s or whatever. Vince had it a little circusly like. But come on, bro. Now, come on. You got Trick Williams losing to Pete Dunne. Whew. I feel sorry for so many wrestlers, man. It don't make no sense. It just don't. Shoot, Bianca and Jay need to be challenging for something they damn self. Like, I don't be understanding what's going on in wrestling. We really held Roman Reigns out 
for four months. Think about it. They said he had three returns, 2019, I think, 2020, and 2024. So these are supposed to mean something because he was supposed to have been doing some big shit within these three returns. So what is he finna really accomplish this return? He finna get a necklace back and what? Retire it and then what? Like what? What is what is he really finna do, bro? Cause y'all gonna cry if he beat Cody before this year is over. So what is he really finna do? It put more heat if Solo would have beat him, bro. It do. Solo need to find a way to get a rematch, but it really don't even make sense. It was by their rules with bloodline rules. How could you even ask for a rematch? But he really does need to find a way. Bad blood, something, and then you debut Hakilu, and then you take it from there. That will literally turn the rest of this year all the way up. Because there's no real other direction. Where are we finna get ready to go? Friday finna come up. Roman finna talk. More weeks about the bloodline versus each other. Then bring in more people, which everybody is predicting. Like we predicted almost everything that was going to happen in SummerSlam. So more months of predictability. Then we ain't even getting started on what's going to happen on Raw and SmackDown, which is more months of predictability. Like, come on, bro. It ain't finna be no real shock value. You see the debuts? We ain't even had no real debuts. Odyssey Jones finna be Braun Breaker? Odyssey Jones finna go against Gunther? Odyssey Jones finna go against LA Knight? Like, quit playing, bro. Even the debuts gonna be small, but not really meaningful. Jay Cargill probably was the last impact debut that we had. Seriously, because Braun Breaker was on the NXT, so yes, Jay Cargill will probably be the last big name that we've had because I don't see it really happening right now. It's too many log jams. And it's Triple H fault. And I should have been and had that title and dropped it. So we wouldn't have had this pit problem. But instead they put it on Escobar. And I'm sure whether you was like, oh, Vince, whoop de woo dude. Santos Escobar is a Triple H guy, bro. I don't care what y'all say, bro. He is a Triple H guy, bro. Straight up. They ain't hard to spot, bro. And I don't even see why he'd be so obsessed with him. Only reason why he'd be so obsessed with him because he'd be hell bent on trying to make a Neville 2.0. Bro, it's only one Neville, bro. Stop. The look, the 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 aggression, the the believability with his uh size, even though he's short, the move set, the things that he can do, he like ricochet, but believable. Like, come on, bro. Stop it. Stop it. Plus he got a little bit more dynamicness to him. He ain't just a pure high flyer. Like, come on, bro, stop it. Escobar, a straight Triple H guy. That's why he got a faction. Plus, it also tells you how they can't book the Latinos properly neither because every time they get them, they just throw them in the LWO or throw them in a, um, throw them in a faction with Escobar. Carlito got lucky. He got moved to Judgment Day, but he still ain't doing nothing but carrying the bags. I yet to remember him having one match. And for put, bro, I be on Carlito head now, bro. I don't hear nobody saying this, but and give me credit. Nobody said this first until I did. Infamous Loa 2.0. Hell, Infamous Loa. It's really a disrespect to Infamous Loa, really. Bro, debuted and hit Randy Orton in the head with some steps. Carlito did anything like that. Any of his targets been anything like that. Anything. He been on some Randy Orton level at a pay-per-view. Stop playing. He was there with the Paul Heyman getting whoop movement. He was, bro, he been there for a lot of stuff. Even though he done botched a few and whoop de woo he's actually been more active than Carlito. It's really a disrespect to even say Infamous Lord 2.0. I bet Infamous Lord probably watched this video like, yeah, I'm the original. I guess so. Shit, ain't you, you want, it's just, it's just you, my boy. I guess. Because, shit, I've been giving Carlito credit, but you really putting in more work than he is. It don't make no damn sense. Boy, I saw that boy backstage. He was just carrying bags. Yep, that's his role. Carrying the apple or carrying the bag. You pick. Or pointing at somebody's, yeah. Dude, dude is weird. That is not the Carlito I remember growing up, bro. And he got size. He could thump with a few people. Why well, wouldn't get no weird... Carlito versus Bronson Reed versus, you feel me, throw in another name. Why we ain't just been getting no throw-off type of weird type of matches? We used to get them all the time growing up. Al Snow versus Midian and all these little weird matches that you wouldn't expect, but sometimes you actually give it some time. You'd be like, wait a minute, they kind of got a little chemistry. Head Shrinker versus one of them or something. You'd be like, wait a minute, they, these, these might not be the guys we expect, but it's kind of working in the ring. Nowadays, it's just like, 
what the hell, bro? Like, they always got to have some cheap gimmicky thing to keep you watching the show. Oh, a tag team tournament. Oh, another tag team tournament. Oh, let's see who's talking today. Oh, let's see who's talking the next day. Like, bro, what the fuck? We used to have these ain't even real storylines when you think about it. Think about the Triple H uh, and Rikishi angle with Stone Cold getting ran over. Think about how the Rock and uh, Stone Cold used to go into it all the time with the bridge, throwing the belt off the thing, throwing Ken Shamrock into it, Undertaker with the Ministry of Darkness, putting people on the cross, viscera, but with the, ad, uh, AP, the uh, Acolytes who became the AOP. Like, bro, we actually had storylines that really turned into other angles and other people benefited off it and they won championships. Same way how Wall Class crying about the bodyguard angle. You're supposed to have the other factions benefiting off of uh, going against Cody Rose and different stuff like that, too. Bro, in an era where the tag team titles are less valued, that ain't enough to really say, hey, bro, this is a strong faction. The judgment they got tag team titles. But if it wasn't for having Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley and then once Edge, you wouldn't even take them as a prominent faction. Come on, bro. Finn Balor, Carlito, and JD. And Dominic, without real, no one took him serious until he got in Judgment Day. Let's stop playing. You don't even hear niggas, Clark Clyde, make videos about Dominic. Oh, whoa, oh, oh. Because the flame done went down. He don't even get in the ring, really. It's all little baby things that he got to do to get over. And if you pay attention closely enough, the women are getting him over. Liv is getting him over. Rhea is getting him over. He don't got the appeal to really do it. Then he's trying to play it safe so much because he married. The women are getting him over. They're making him look tough. They're the badass. Liv got the pill. Rhea's the tough guy. He's just there. I'm out. I cook. Pot. Stir. Fork. Gucci. I'm a, I'm a billion. I'm a, I'm a, huh?